Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. I have a treat for you today. I am here with Michelle Trena, who is a performer, educator, and creator of multiple performance brands that carry a thread of healing through humor. She has toured around the country doing stand up to Shakespeare, but when she was getting divorced, she decided to put her diary on the stage and she created the Divorce Diaries in 2013, which has evolved into a one woman comedy show that laughs at life's beautiful mishaps. Michelle is fiercely energetic and uses her own challenges in life to motivate and inspire her to educate and perform. She's obsessed with coffee, high kicks and running literally everywhere, but her favorite role will always be mom to her beautiful, daughter grace so divorce diaries is a one woman show that follows creator michelle around as a divorced mom who teaches a child with special needs and dates men with um probably more special needs so welcome hi renee i'm so excited to be here oh i'm so excited to have you and i'm laughing like trying to keep a straight face already because as i was doing that intro for anyone who's listening michelle like just put her leg like over her like around her <laughs> neck Pretty much. <laughs> I have to work that. I know I have to work that more. And I do that on my stand up show, but like not in a dress. It doesn't look, you know, appropriate. But <laughs> people who know me from college. Went. Yeah. People who know me in college back in the day used to know that at one point of the night, I would be doing a high kick and a skirt. And then, you know, post divorce, that side came out again. Aren't you glad that social media was not like it is back in the college days? Because I am sure there are things out there that should never see the light of day. Yeah, I probably would have been hired as a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> no, All right. So let's talk about your divorce story. How long has it been? Like, what inspired you to put your diary on stage for everyone to observe and laugh yeah, at? Yeah, I think that. I thank you for having me. This is a great platform to talk about how humor heals because divorce can be a big gloomy topic. And I felt like, you know, why not laugh at it? You know, you can cry about it for sure, but make, like things are so absurd that happen within the divorce itself. And then after that, you've got to make a joke about it. So I was always a performer. I went to school for acting, uh, college and naturally everything that happened in my life, I always put on stage in some form or form of another or another. Um, I work with kids. I started my own theater company. I was a teacher for many years. I created one woman show about being a teacher. Uh, and then when I was moved, when I moved back home with my parents six years ago, uh, was my official divorce day, but actually it was seven years ago that I moved back home with my Italian parents, my grandmother, my twin brother, and I had a handicapped dog. There's a joke coming here, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it was like the, it was the Italian Adams family, you know, like uncle Fester. Like, I feel like I was uncle Fester. Cause it was like, you know, how uncle Fester was like in one of the movies, he was like normalized. I yeah. came back and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> then I finally became like, I embraced my roots. I embraced the organized chaos, right. <laughs> of my family. Um, I grew up in this home. I had, I started raising my daughter in this home. Um, there were lots of things happening at once. There was uh, selling my house. My daughter had developmental delays. I had therapists, lawyers, real estate agents, and and like family members interspersed throughout the texting, the combos, the emails, the opinions. And so at one point, I just was like, I you can't make up me waking up in my grandfather's old bedroom, because my grandmother and grandfather were very old school Italian. They slept in separate rooms. They also, I just don't think they liked each other, but they, they slept in separate rooms. So my grandmother's room was a separate room. And I slept, my grandfather had passed, slept in his room. She was 92 at the time, still going strong, but didn't feel like she needed to like go to the bathroom. She would just wear diapers. So she had to, she, you know, was some, we used to joke, like, was it because like she really couldn't hold it or was she just like, I don't give a fuck. I'm 92. <laughs> so it happens when you're 92. Yeah, you can curse. <laughs> I mean, I feel like too, the way my grandmother was when she was like young, she was like, I don't give a shit. You need to pick up after me. You know, like that's how she was. She was a baby of eight, you know, like that kind of mentality. So she, 
would follow me with a cane. If I snapped at her, she snapped with the cane. It was like, what is going on? My daughter was potty training along with her. So I started thinking of, I was like, this is like my divorce diary. I think a reality show is big. I'm a big Bravo fan. And it just was like, this needs to be some kind of reality show or, or comedy of like, you know, like kind of like the office, like a mockumentary. Yeah. So I just started with that idea of me living at home with these scenarios has to get put up on stage. So I slowly implemented writing and developing this piece um, into New York. And then I started doing stand up because I used to do comedy years ago prior to starting Divorce Diaries. And then I, I just started doing stand up and then I started integrating the show. I started to transform the show from a theater piece to a comedy show over the last five years. And two years ago, I finally moved out of my parents' house, uh, which was another transition, um, but I was making progress. It, it took four years for me to finally build up money, build up credit um, to make that change. But within those four years, you you go through this this like tornado of happiness and like craziness yeah. and, and, and love again, and then you're heartbroken again. And so, um, that was kind of the whirlwind of divorce diaries and still is post leaving with my parents. <laughs> How long have you been divorced now? It will be at least six years in April. What? Okay. So how did you find humor in that moment? Cause so many people think that this is like the worst thing in the world that can happen to them. And it is like, it, it really sucks when you're going through it, but you were able to tap into the funny of it. It was, be okay, so remember George Costanza from Seinfeld and his mm -hmm. parents? Just picture his parents times a thousand in the household and then, and then like random things happening. Like you can't just cry at that. It's like insanity, you know? Yeah. So I felt like you were that way. If I stayed in my marriage, I would have probably created a murder mystery. <laughs> because it was so depressing yeah. you know like I finally started to laugh when I moved back home with my parents the divorce part uh was very hard and I was like oh my god like I can't believe we're ending our marriage when I decided to even separate before filing for divorce eight months prior to that it was so heavy that I think you go through that heavy state and you need to go through that heavy state in order to find the humor in it I don't think you just jump to jokes yeah. um now now, when I go through a breakup or like, you know, in my head, we were together and we broke up, but like, I, <laughs> I, I, I definitely, I cry. I, I let myself have that heavy feeling, but then I rant about it. I legit just will talk to myself in the shower. I'll write and find the humor in it. In finding the humor in it is taking the irrational side. So in other words, like, I can't rage text my ex-husband for what he's done in when our divorce, right? But I could definitely rant about it on stage as a character, you know? So that's how I kind of found the humor. My, my, the, the sadness, the anger, turning it into, I'm just going to go off. And then people find you kind of like, oh, that's just crazy. Like, so I kind of find it that way. Um, I think you do have to process emotions to get to the funny part. You're so funny on social media. Like it's hysterical. You come across my feed and I like I have to stop every time and I just laugh every every single time. So are you, I mean you're just obviously a naturally funny person. This is not take work for you. I mean, I appreciate you saying that. That makes that like I I read this book filling your bucket for kids and that fills my bucket to the utmost level. Like <laughs> But filled so much joy in my heart. I just grew up in a in a, a, a household. My dad specifically was comical. Like the storytelling he would tell was comical naturally, right? And just because it had a lot of passion and fire behind it, and a lot of irrational statements that I tap into that a lot. And I was like, go for it. Like that's what people need to hear because you hear so much advice on like, you know you know, nar you know, narcissistic abuse. And like, you know, uh, yeah. I think I did one yesterday and, and I hope she's not mad. There's a coach on that follows me and I follow her. And she wrote, she tagged me in her story of like, you know, um, just remember that somebody else's therapist knows all about you. So I twisted it and I was like, I would be ecstatic if the one ex that I still have feelings for talks about me in therapy. <laughs> Who cares? That's awesome. <laughs> but like, but that is the, <laughs> I just, 
take my truths, my flaws, and I put it out there. And when it makes people laugh, it makes me feel so good because I'm helping them feel good about life. So I appreciate that. I mean, yeah, I think there's a natural uh, side of me. I think everyone has it that they just have to tap into to not take themselves too seriously. So what is the funniest thing that you, that has happened to you or that you talk about from, as a result of your divorce? Um, so, oh gosh, there's many, um, one of the main things is, is the post-divorce dating. That's my most favorite to talk about because it keeps getting, it, it doesn't stop. Like even present day, I'm just like, what the fuck? Um, I, I relentlessly throw my energy out to unavailable men and I try not to, but then like, I'm, I'm like, no, I'm not going to, and then I'll do it again. Right. So I think the funniest story is that I have, I fell in love with a married man. And is nobody this post-divorce. Yeah, this was post-divorce. Okay. Well, we'll get to the one during my divorce, but <laughs> there was, there was a couple of, uh, the dating issues where I fell in love with a married man and I believed everything he said, which was like the cliche thing to do. Right. Yeah. And then my dad died right? His wife ended up calling me and telling me the truth. And she's like, we don't live separate lives. He's lying to you. I've known about you. And I was like, well, you know, I'll never forget that she, we were on the phone, three of us were on the phone together. And, um, I hope my daughter's school can't hear this story. <laughs> no, but we were on the phone together and I'll never forget it. Or I was shocked. And all of a sudden he's like, well, do you want her to come over tonight and talk? And in my head, I go, oh my gosh, we're going to, I'm going to actually see his apartment now. Like in my brain, that's where I still was. I'm like, Michelle, like that's mm -hmm. the most funny part of my divorce for me. It's just, I still not really getting it, <laughs> even though it's like me, I'm working myself. That's like, to me, the most humorous part. I'm like, oh my God. And then I think with my ex-husband is we have different, we have completely different appropriate levels of boundaries. And, and like, and how he has introduced new girlfriends mm -hmm. into my daughter's life. I don't agree with, and I voiced that, um, and he's gotten better, but it's like, are you serious? Um, that kind of thing. I, I'll say it. He had the first girlfriend that he had, he had a sleepover unannounced and had my daughter and the other girl's daughter sleep in the same bed and then took a bath mm -hmm. together. Like, oh, well, they're cute. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, tell that to the DCCP when they're fucking, you know, <laughs> like, what? And, you know, not everyone agrees with me on that, yeah. but like, I, it, it wasn't coming from like he's in it, like, he wasn't coming from a malicious place on his part. He just doesn't think that that's like inappropriate. Like, they're just kids and I'm with my new yeah. girlfriend because yeah. you want a divorce, bitch. Like, that's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what other, um, you mentioned the other relationship during, during your divorce. So I dated, um, I started to talk to a couple guys, you know, I didn't have, I was like not intimate with anybody for two years. So I was ready. I was, as soon as I was ready to like pounce, I was ready to pounce. And I, I was, had a fling with a younger guy. And I was at one point believed that he was going to be the one. And even my therapist convinced me that it's her fault. I blame it on her. She totally was at a fault. point like, cause like we had a one night, he came to my birthday dinner. I was like, okay, okay, let's do it. Let's um, have a need to have sex. And the guy prior to him couldn't use the condom. So it was like a mess. It was, it was like a flop the first time I tried to have sex with a guy. And he was like, he just <laughs> wanted to phone sex and not actually have sex. I was like, dude, what the fuck? So and everyone would say to me, why do you always get the guys that, that can't use the condoms? And I'm like, I don't know. And then my, I want, my one friend was like, well, maybe you're not like preparing yourself enough for them to, I was like, you know what? I give up. Like, I was still learning. I feel like I'm still 13, like trying to figure it out anyway. <laughs> so for the younger guy, I felt, I started thinking I was falling in love with him. And meanwhile, I wasn't, but he told a friend of mine like at the end of the two months, like we work, we bartended together. I was bartending on the side and he's like, you can have her. I'm done. <laughs> I felt like I was in high school. I was so, I was like, oh, my heart sank. I, I was just like, I am, I was 33 at the time. And I was like, oh my God, I'm getting played by a 23 year old. So that was rough, <laughs> you know, <laughs> some weird nights there. I, had, I, I ended up falling asleep at his house where he lived with his parents and I had to have him sneak me out because I was too embarrassed. 
It does sound very much like high school. Yeah, I was winning at that point in life. Yeah, <laughs> you were winning. <laughs> it was, it, who, who would have known that was not my lowest point post-divorce dating? <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> so how, you actually performed, I think that um, I saw some another lawyer in Connecticut had, had posted that you had performed. She was looking back and um, was laughing or reminiscing about the times we could do this in person. Oh, gosh, I have to look up Rosemary. Yes, or, Ferranti. Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, that was so, last year. That was so much fun. That was one of my favorite shows ever because it was a bunch of group of group of women and they were all divorced and we were all introducing it was the best because i was really crude that show too i think one person let like an older woman laugh because i was uh, maybe being a little too um uh provocative but i do do clean material but like my true self has some dirty stuff in it you gotta like go with it so i was telling it i i that was a lot of fun and we were all talking about our divorces prior to the comedy show and like some people were crying i was like oh you guys gotta get it like we we cannot this is not <laughs> but we had such a good time they were laughing i was like this is how it is i said um you know i'm from working class Jersey. My whole family is, but I'm the only one that stayed working class. Everyone moves to Bergen County. And then when they moved to Bergen County, they moved to Connecticut where I was doing the show. And yeah. my cousin was one of them there. Oh, that's hysterical. <laughs> She's only married one there. I was like, Oh, well, th th there's still time for that to end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what's, what's in the future for divorce diaries? So the future is I am looking to get a network to pick up the show. I wrote a spec script, which is like a pilot. Um, and I'm looking to film it this summer. So my, my idea, I want a network to pick up. That's the big, big thing that's on the plate. That's always been a goal of mine with the show. In addition to continue to build the show as a brand and as, you know, a live entertainment piece always. But I uh, wrote a pilot for it and I'm in just waiting for it to be funded. I have an Indiegogo campaign. So if people are interested in, in seeing what the show is about as a pilot, there's an Indiegogo link on my Divorce Diaries show website, divorcediariesshow.com. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm plugging away to get it funded, but no matter what, it's going to be filmed this summer. Like I'm filming it. We're going to have something to show people and say, this is what it is. We got a pitch deck. We have a logbook, all that stuff, getting it all together. You recently posted something. I have to ask you about it. It was, um, it was like the full length shot that you had to take a picture of for like a callback. What was that? So I do, I, I act this, my, like I left teaching a year ago, um, full time and I work for myself. Now I do my theater company for children with or without special needs I do kids theater virtually. Thank you. Thank mm. God that I was able to platform that way. And then I auditioned for acting gigs. Like I did a commercial back in October and then I got, yeah, I, I had a call back on Sunday for, I, 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 it was an infomercial and they sent it to me at one o'clock and I didn't get it till five. And I was like, how did I miss this email? Cause of Sunday, you kind of like put your, your phone down. Yeah. Of course I put my phone down four hours later. I'm like, I bought, and I didn't get the freaking gigs. They have not, I think it was today they were shooting. Yeah. So. Wow. <laughs> on to the next so that you um there's a movie that just came out that i feel like you would be a really good connection for um called um Frenity steves who is an actress just did um released before during and after and it's a movie about kind of like a heavy movie on the divorce journey of one woman but she's super funny in it so there's like moments of her like sh shopping for a vibrator like, and that's hysterical. Like there's some really, really funny moments that you like pull from, you know, your, your divorce and yes. all of those things. Oh, so yes, yes, yeah, still have to uh, check that out. So um, I'm super excited to see what you're doing. Your YouTube channel has you, you're doing some stand up. It's freaking funny. It's oh, hysterical. Like everyone has to check it out. Um, and you have some really funny skits and stuff in there as well. So no, my, no go ahead. Yep. My YouTube channel is a is a plethora, divorce diaries or YouTube is a plethora of like some of the stand-up, some of my sketches, and then also the unscripted series, which is like for me. I really wish I could just have cameras following me around 24 hours a day. So I just tape myself. 
And like, <laughs> but that's the other concept besides a script. And I was like, Hey, what about a reality show? So I'm, I'm trying to put everything on my YouTube channel. Just be like, this is, this is my life. This is my diary. And then I, I do write. So I write sketches. Like I do the real housewife sketches for the North pole, like all fun, funny stuff that I hope single women and men can connect single, but like, there's that, that's my lens, you know, I'm a single mom working class and like, you know, multiple degrees, but like trying to catch up still, I'm trying to like, where, you know, <laughs> I have, I have four degrees. What's going on? Why am I still paycheck to paycheck? All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, d divorce, Divorce is like such a major plot twist, you know, and, and it like throws a curveball into all of your well-intentioned and laid out plans. I think like my marriage was the plot twist. I think for yeah. my entire family, they thought that was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Cause they didn't agree. They didn't feel like we connected. They didn't feel like we were right for each other. And I think in essence, the, the irony of my situation is divorce was like the saving grace. And, oh, that's funny and of my actual like where you're supposed to be you know like the I, I i'm a huge fan of the alchemist where it's like you're finding a personal legend and achieving it and it's like some people stop and give up on it right because they get closer to her and it becomes harder that's what i tell myself when shit gets deep <laughs> so when you told your family it was kind of like a duh like we knew that was coming all along <laughs> They were like that, but then they were also like, well, you shouldn't have listened to us in the first place. We told you this. Don't <laughs> yeah. bring it up. Like, yeah. well, it's because you married him. I'm like, I divorced him and I moved on. <laughs> so, so, so the next time you get married, will you have them do their like their approval, their test to give you the the okay? At that point, they're just going to be like, so he has a pulse and he's calling you. Great. Like, because at this point it's been six years, like according to some of my family members, it's like, you know, you're, they're not going to want to take you because you have baggage. Like, it's like, what? So oh, no, I don't know. For me, it's like been a struggle to find a decent man that I can connect with on all levels and is comfortable with the comedy. That mm. is a lot of men that are not comfortable with it. I might it's have, a but not. I might have a few clients. I can kind of dig out some numbers for you. Send them over. Girl, I'm on speed dial. <laughs> Hit me up. That, that's going to be my next business, the matchmaking business. <laughs> you can be client number one. We'll see what happens. <laughs> awesome. Michelle, where do we find you? How do we connect with you? Let's send people to all of your stuff to laugh along with you. Yes, uh, it would be great. Divorcediarieshow.com. You go there, you can find all my social. And if for some reason you're like, oh my God, I can't find you. Cause you know, knowing that the person in my life, they'll be like, oh, I loved in your website's out. Well, my website's up at divorcediarieshow.com or Divorce Diaries on all platforms. Divorce Diaries show. Here comes my daughter. You can hear. Hello. That's quite all right. <laughs> it's COVID world. So awesome. That was so much fun. Thank you so much. And I cannot wait to, um, I'm going to have to, once you go live again, I'm tracking your show down. I will be oh, there. I, I can't wait. Thank you so much, Renee, for having me. This was a blast. I'm going to be in Florida, May 21st, Punta Gorda, the library comedy club. That's my, my, <laughs> that, your listeners can't. My daughter's mermaid tail is on my head. <laughs> this is real life. So. This is real life. This is what you just get more of that though. If they follow you, <laughs> this is why I need the cameras. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. All right, girl. Later. Bye Renee. Take care. <laughs>